Good morning, viewers from around the world and uh, those at home. I'd like to welcome Graham. And Graham has recently got back from India and Mumbai, where he was uh, dreaming up all new plans for colouring your life's future. So I thought I'd uh, talk to Graham and share it with the rest of the world because it's also amazing that we could be in front of you know, those 1.3 billion people. So Graham, you uh, were speaking with Manish and he took you on a, a business trip to Mumbai. And the first place you went, was where was that? Well, we, we went into Mumbai, which is where his family is based and where he does a lot of his consultancy work. So he lives actually in Australia, but he's a, an Indian consultant for Australian business people over there. And he actually works with uh, Middle East as well. Um, and heard about what we were doing and I was interested in speaking to him about the market. So there's a huge amount, mostly I think watercolour artists in, in uh, India. I mean, I mean, just a really big following. So Manish actually organised some meetings for me over a 10 day period. And uh, yeah, it's amazing, an amazing city. Such a contrast between the outrageously wealthy and the incredibly poor. Um, you sort of, you know, you've got to see it to believe it. Well, but wait, um, wait, you're talking about a 28 story house that uh, or yeah. building that one family lived in only one it's a multi-story building but it's a it's a home but they had two levels just for luxury cars full-size swimming pool gymnasium on one floor separate homes on each floor as it goes up you know two or three stories high inside the multi-story okay and that home is worth two billion dollars it's a two wow. billion dollar home is quite amazing and then literally 100 yards is extreme poverty i mean it's not as if it's in beverly hills where you've got a lot of them it's just it's just such a contrast it really is yeah I, but you know you go sorry no, no, you go i when i think of india because when my friends my hippie friends go to india they just go to the places where all the poorest people live so mm. it wasn't kind of even in my world that there were lots and lots of multi-millionaires in India. Um, so it's interesting that you sort of enter this whole new world and introduce this whole new world to me. Anyway, so you went to this fantastic art fair. Is that what you did? Well, what I did is I had meetings with a lot of the leading art people in Mumbai. Uh, mm -hmm. Met a gentleman who we sort of became really good friends with in the end. He was a bit sort of standoffish at me at first, but but uh, a guy called Vijay Road, and Vijay is the founder of the Bombay Art Society and actually designed the building itself. And um, he was a great guy. He actually did my portrait towards the end of the, uh, of the time that we were there. And uh, he loved what we were doing, actually wants to do a show with me at some stage at the Mumbai um, Art Society. And then we also spoke to the director of the Sir JJ's Academy of Arts in Mumbai, and that's the largest art academy in, in the country. And they have facilities based all over India. Um, and he basically is um, sort of 2IC to the Arts and Culture Minister. So very high up, uh, lovely gentleman, and also saw the benefits of what we were doing. He was actually talking about the potential of colonial life uh, being able to uh, document and film all of the hundred different tribes and their artistic formats as well that are scattered right across India, the very isolated tribes that still exist there. So I just thought that that was a fantastic idea to be able to get into these really isolated places and then see how they do their art forms and, and then capture that uh, for perpetuity, which would be great. Yeah, but at the moment, uh, we're just starting to put together the potential for the pilot and the pilot will enable us to hopefully work with uh, a famous artist and, and some of the artists over there I mean I was a bit blown away I mean artists that are my age that have been painting for 40 years and have got a good reputation can get anywhere from one to five million dollars a painting cool that's, that's wow. how big the market actually is wow. just bizarre but then again there are literally more billionaires there than just about anywhere else in the world these days so they can afford to, to do stuff like that. It's really quite mind boggling. So we're going to be looking towards uh, potentially getting one of these top artists 
to be filmed and then putting a bit, bit of a longer show together not instead of 24 minutes it'll be 28 minutes and then showcasing the historical areas the red whether the red fort the taj mahal all of these things that make up india and turning it into a situation where it can also be potentially used by indian tourism and australian tourism to promote india through the arts and then be able to uh, showcase what color in your life could, can potentially do and then we will be looking for sponsors and financiers to to back the series as it develops over there. But the market's really quite amazing. And I had a number of fans that had travelled like quite long distances to see me. And it was funny because they watch us on, uh, we're not on TV there yet, but they watch us on YouTube. And it was great. I mean, Nitin Singh, who's a fantastic young guy, got a great following himself over there. Um, and some other young ladies that were big fans of the show came along as well and some other people and sort of said oh my god I can't believe you here <laughs> which was a bit funny but but all around had a great time great great response and um as i said i'll be meeting with uh manish hopefully in the next week uh to discuss the potential of getting the crew over there towards the end of the year it's no point next month because it's the monsoons and it's summer and it rains continuously for four months so we just simply we couldn't do it so December January are the best months over there because the winter time and it's still hot uh, but no weather uh, and the sun's out and we can do what we need to do so that's what we're planning on anyway oh that's that's interesting okay great and um, wasn't there a, a another woman that you were speaking with um, I've forgotten her name yeah uh, Janya yeah uh, and Janya's a businesswoman over there very successful businesswoman that um, uh, does consultancy, but she looks for venture capital money. And um, she spoke about uh, what we could potentially do with Colour in Your Life, but we really do need to get the pilot done. Once the pilot is done, and it basically reflects upon um, India, the academies, the schools, and Colour in Your Life sort of joining forces, it'll be a lot easier for us to seek funding. I mean, and an artist that sells his paintings for a million dollars probably won't pay to be on the show because he gets a million dollars a painting. And then you've got the other end of the spectrum because there's sort of nothing in between. You either simply can't afford it or it's you don't need it in the end. And, you know, this would be great for legacy by any means, of course, to capture this information of these people that have done so well with their careers. But um, there, there really is a, is a gap and, um, and hopefully with sponsors and funding we can, we can still create colour in your life over there. They were even talking about maybe getting one of the Bollywood actresses, who's also a, a fantastic artist, to be the host of the series over there. Wow. Um, which would once again create a lot more attention because you've got a famous name attached to it for a start. Yes. So lots of stuff that's in the mill um, that we have to um, put together and hopefully by the end of the year we'll be heading back to, heading back to Mumbai. Oh, well, it's all very exciting and, and uh, great news for the artists who are already involved in Colour in Your Life. Um, because hopefully in the future that their shows will be shown to those, um, uh, those that population there and, um, and the ones that are signing up to come on board in you know, the potential for those future millions to be watching them and seeing their art in the studio is massive and very, very exciting. Another exciting thing happening in Colour in Your Life, it doesn't stop. It's always we, still, we, still, we still have China and Asia to get to yet, so yeah. Uh, yeah. we can eventually get on board in the next few years, um, who knows what could happen. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for letting us know about Colour in Your Life. And uh, for any artists who are out there looking um, and watching us and are still trying to think about whether it's worth coming on our show, it definitely is. We've got a list of people you can contact or a bunch of testimonials you can view. Uh, and um, recently we, we beat uh, a record, a little personal colour in your life record where we received uh, 12,000 YouTube views in one week. We're not quite sure why one YouTube has more views than the other. We were working a lot behind the scenes and, um, and Jenny, our, uh, one of our production people, is definitely doing a lot of algorithms and, and stuff behind the scenes. But still trying to work out that final mysterial, mysterious um, factor, the X factor. But we're thrilled that that many people are watching Colour in Your Life in one week. 
and our recent show is also getting great numbers too. So we'll see what happens by Friday. If that beats the 12,000, then, you know, who knows? What did you say the other day? Soon we'll be getting 100,000 views in one week. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's climbing rapidly and exponentially. I mean, why the numbers go up, they do. I mean, we're still not quite sure. But once we get to a certain level, uh, YouTube management steps in and we're very, very close to that level. And then literally it will start to increase quite, quite rapidly, I would say, because they want then to build the system with you um, because, because of the advertising dollars that they can attach to it as well. So and I can already see some of the art groups that have known about us over the years are attaching commercials and ads to our pages now. You can actually see that starting to happen. So they're obviously well aware of what we've done and they want to be part of the growth as well. So, you know, come along. It's in the end, if you're not there, you simply just miss out. And but I don't think there's anything else like this in the world. So, yeah. All right, Graham, it's, it's nice to see you again. And uh, we'll say bye for now. Thank you, Matt. Bye now.